So here's the get down on why I do my seating chart the way that I do. First of all, I do rows and I do rows for a couple of different reasons, but I'll say first that rows in my optimal teaching experience would not be the way to go. I don't like the formality of it. I don't like the rigidity of it. I don't like the fact that it looks like, makes my classroom look like a classroom from the 1950s. But I've learned that the students are more used to rows. And so I start my year off with rows and with assigned seating. And that changes, and I'll get into that in a second. And the way that I do that is, one, I seat you alphabetically in the beginning of the year because it makes it easier for me to have a sense of who you are and where you're supposed to be. And when I'm handing out paperwork in the beginning of the year, it's a lot easier. And so even the way I set up my seating chart looks like this. So let me see if I can adequately explain this. When I have my seating chart, and I realize this is hard to see, the child that sits right here in the front is sitting in that desk right there. The child that sits in the seat behind him is right there. So when I'm looking at my seating chart, I can actually see in front of me who's supposed to be there. Now this makes a couple of things easier. Alphabetized students are a lot easier to organize for than kids that just sit wherever they want. Never be 100% certain that your seating chart will stay that way for the rest of the year. Kids are gonna move. Kids are gonna sit next to their brother or their cousin. You're gonna realize that someone shouldn't sit near a certain group of people. And so it's always fluid, but for that first day, I like to show that I'm in order, that I know your name, that I know where you're supposed to sit, and then all the adequate paperwork, like I said, can get handed out. It also allows me to do attendance way faster than I would otherwise. I never have to call a child's name. If you are not in the correct seat if there is a gap I just know that that child gets an A next to his name and an L if you're late then I don't have to sit here and go Mr. Hall is Mr. Hall here Mr. Hall anywhere anywhere Mr. Hall's not paying attention or he's in the hallway or whatever because they're children and because they are not always paying attention sometimes someone is out of their seat or they're in the wrong seat at the beginning of class and I have a couple of choices there. My general rule is that you lose a point for the day if you're not in your seat when the bell rings. And what that does is it stops the pandemonium of everyone trying to run to their seat before the bell rings. But if you know a student or you see that they were being helped or they were working on something with someone else, you can have some grace for students, but that's at your discretion. But my general rule is you're not in the seat, you're making me write something on my paper I don't wanna write, now you lose a point for the day. Bam! And sometimes I just say they lose a point and they don't really lose anything because who has time for all that? This is not an easy video to shoot, but here's how I do it. If you put kids in alphabetical order, you're going to go A, B, C, D. Then you're not going to come back up to the front. Instead, you're going to go A, B, C, D, E in the back of the classroom right there, F, G, H. What that's gonna allow you to do is smoothly move around the room, up and down the aisles, and not have to come back up to the front every time you have that next kid, which is dangerous in itself because there's book bags all over the place, kids' long legs sticking out, you're gonna trip, fall. Couple more quick tips, and this, this is a great one, and I think I stole it from Pinterest or something, so I didn't come up with this. I number all of the desks. So this desk is number one, then number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what that allows you to do is when students start moving, instead of alphabetizing their names, you have them in number order. And every time this student hands in a paper, they write a number one on the top. That student writes a number two. So then when you wanna organize the papers, you can organize them and then hand them back way faster because you're not running from a student over here to a student over here to a student back here to a student up here. You can just snake through the room and it's much easier to hand things out. The other thing, which looks a little bit disgusting because it's the end of the year, but I have lines on my floor that I made with duct tape and then after a while, you just pull that duct tape up and guess what? It looks all disgusting and gross, but whatever. The lines let the students know where their desks should be. So if my room gets chaotic, if we do a project, if we do something where we move all the desks out because we're gonna act something out in the classroom. So whenever any kind of madness is going on and I need the kids to put their desks back, one, they're already numbered, and two, there are lines on the floor to let them know where the desks should go so that my aisles don't end up like two feet to the left or something like that.